and make sure. Okay? If you're in a hospital setting where the patient is an outpatient just coming in to get that x-ray, you're going to have to kind of use some of your better judgment and defer to what the patient is saying. In which case you could document, patient said, okay to remove, and then the, the patient removed it. And that kind of goes into the next part of this, is that I very seldomly will remove any sort of immobilization device from a patient. I, if they're okay with it being removed, because a lot of times they'll say, oh yeah, I can take it off. I take it off to shower, I take it off for bed, the doctor just wants me using it during the day for some extra support. I say, okay, then go ahead and remove that. I've got this all set up. You know, hold your arm for me while, and you know, place it on the cassette if we're gonna do a wrist or a forearm. Um, so really kind of putting a lot of that into the patient's realm of, if you're saying it's okay to take it off, then you go ahead and take it off, all right? Um, and like I said, the other instance, more than likely, is gonna be in an orthopedic type setting where you have that doc there in the office. And the other thing is, ask the patient to sit down for a minute, and if they're not, the doc's not in your facility, make a phone call or ask another patient or ask the radiologist. Because they might have the patient's priors and say, oh yeah, it's been six weeks since, go ahead and remove it. I really need, you know, that artifact out of the way. So, yeah, it's just, it's one of those, use your better judgment, really depends on the protocols and things of your facility. Um, so if that mobilization device can be removed, ask the patient to remove it, assist as necessary, never full force the immobilization device on or off. Um, the patient will need to remain supported during movement. I mean, they came in with that support. So don't have them take it off and then walk down the hallway to the room that you're going to be in. You know, let them keep it on until you get where you're going to be. Have them remove it. Ask them to, you know, keep themselves supported. Or remove it if you're going to do any sort of lower extremity stuff. Remove it on the x-ray table so then they're not walking around the room without it. Um, you don't want to cause further injury and you don't want to be liable, you know, should things like that happen. So here's just a few examples of immobilization devices, um, short arm cast, some slings, and then also, you know, ankle brace type things. Um, the cast can be imaged directly through the sling, and they're getting better with a lot of this as far as not putting metal buckles and slides and things on that. They really are making things a little bit easier for us to image through. Um, and then the ankle brace, it's just gonna add more density. So you're gonna have to change that technique as far as what you're using if the patient can't take it. So, here are some fractures. Um, anyone wanna tell me what type of fracture that we have of the humerus? That's gonna be the one with both that AP and lateral view. It is. It's a spiral fracture. But do you see how, when you look at the AP, you, you can't quite tell really the whole story as to how the bone looks. So this is that really good demonstrator of an AP and lateral. Two 90 degree images are needed to accurately diagnose. All right, how about the hand? There's multiple fractures on there, but they're all the, the same type of fracture. Oblique, yep. They're all oblique fractures. Um, and one thing to throw out there, you know, we know that these are oblique fractures, um, but they also have decided for, of course, to make it fun for everybody, that some of these fractures will get their own kind of name. So this is a boxer's fracture, okay? This is a very common injury when, of course, with boxers hitting, but also then when you have people that come in and I get them all the time, oh, I didn't hit anything, I didn't hit anything, my hands all swollen, I didn't hit anything. They've actually punched someone else or punched a wall. They'll have these same sorts of fractures. So um, those are the best patients that just, I don't know what happened, I didn't do anything. And then it comes up and you're like, okay. Um, and then the wrist fracture there. A what? Right, Polly, Polly's fracture, or Cole's fracture. 
Um, and that's our wrist fracture. But what type of break is that? Going back to that initial slide with some images, what kind of fracture is that? All right, green stick would be not broken all the way through, so we can definitely see that this is broken all the way through. So it is displaced. It is a displaced. That's the where are the bones at in space. So it isn't displaced, but it's a displaced transverse fracture. All right. Yes. <laughs> so this is a fracture of the um, tip fib, the first one there that you're looking at. This is going to be multiple. It is. This is a high impact fracture, but the classification of fracture is that this is actually a comminuted fracture because we have multiple segments of bone. All right, and then I just wanted to show a little bit more about those early stages of healing, just to really show you how subtle it can be. Is that the middle part? Is that also segmented? It looks like there's a fracture below the bulge where the big break is. So there's Right. Yeah, it could be it could be both a segmental comminuted fracture. Because it is you have multiple multiple segments across. Um, and then it looks like the fracture of the um, fibia is actually a transverse fracture. So you've got a nice clean a nice clean break here. So fractures can involve multiple types of fractures, especially when you have high impact fractures like this. And then looking at those early stages of healing, the picture in the top left here is got very little new bone growth. You can see just a tiny bit. And you guys are going to have to look kind of close. Then the one in the middle, still on that top row, you see a little bit more, really on the lateral edges of the bone. Then the one on your far right, you can see that new bone growth into that gap Space. So where are you saying the new bone growth is? So there's new bone growth just starting on the lateral edges. Then it starts to grow, and you—I mean, it, it's very hard to see it, and that's why that technique is so important. And these are things. I mean, we're looking at it on just a regular screen, and these are kind of small pictures that the radiologists, when they look for these sorts of things, they zoom in. They might even invert the image, making their blacks white and whites black, to really kind of try to see these very small details. So I've, I've been lucky in that the facility I work at, I get those radiology reports back. I you know, x-ray these 20 patients, I burn a disc for the radiologist, the next day he brings me back those 20 patients reports. So I have that, I've seen them, I see their report and I get to kind of know, and there are so many things that I look at and I'm like, I don't see anything. I work at a, a little doctor's office up in Hampton. No, it's actually a family practice. Um, used to be an urgent care, and we switched to being a family practice, and so we kept x-ray. Okay. Um, but it'll, I'll look at things, and of course you're not going to tell the patient, oh, I don't see anything, you're fine. That's not your call to make. But I look at them, and it's kind of become my game because I get their reports back the next day. Uh, let me see if I can diagnose this person. And so there's oftentimes these really subtle fractures or these, these really subtle like, oh yeah, it's healing, there's new bone growth, looks good, and I go get that image and I pull it up again and I'm zooming and I'm looking around and it's like, how does the radiologist see these things? So I mean, they just, they have a trained eye and you'll get there even as, as a tech that you'll, you know, really start to see these things and understand them. Um, and then of course, this one's a lot easier to see, the new bone growth here. You've got that callus forming all the way out to both the medial and lateral sides. So, no, it's it's really cool. Looking at fractures is, is What's a lot. that last exposure? That last exposure is a tip fib fracture. Oh, it's, um, it's a little bit over um, or underexposed, just because we don't have as much detail. But it is showing that there is new bone growth here, and also here at the distal side. 
any questions? You guys have been really good at asking a few as we've been along, but is there anything else? <laughs> All right, thank you so very much. I do have um, what is going to become my grade. Um, definitely, though, want your constructive feedback on that. So if you guys will complete that brief survey. Up at the top, it says, are you an instructor or a student, if you'll circle um, what you are. I don't know, did you end up with one, Ken? We didn't, but okay. the extras, I can circle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <coughs> Shauna. Oh, thank you. <laughs>